Uh, we're gonna switch. I, I gotta do another battery over there. These these batteries are supposed to last about an hour, and I guess well I've had them on earlier. So let me switch this other battery, and then we can move on to the next one here. Yeah. So yeah, you can yeah. kind of start start introducing Columbia Crest to us, okay? Yeah. Columbia Crest Grand Estates, Washington State. Um, fascinated by Washington Washington wines, just because of the fact. Um, they're such a it's a, such a cooler climate um, than what we used to hit, say here in Australia. So um, I'm going to get a little bit of a different style. Um, I've had this once or twice before. Haven't had the 2008 vintage, so I'm really I'm really excited to see the difference between um, the Columbia Crest and the Penfold. Right. The two right. wineries are basically they're they're the same in size. They're they're a big, they're a big operation. Um, they pump out huge amounts, huge volumes of wine. So. Um, what did you pay over there, Mark, for this one? I paid the exact same price, eight eighty three. So <laughs> it's about a. Yeah, I was like, okay, I know there's around a ten dollar bottle of wine. I've had Columbia Crest also in the past, so I know it's a. I know it's another. It's it's another one of those wines for me that um, this is owned by the Chateau Saint Michel people, right? It's the Correct. Same, same company. And you know they're they're known as I guess the higher end wine, and Columbia Crest to me is like that that. I wouldn't say secret, but it's it's that wine you just kind of go, it's under 10 bucks, how good can it be? And then you taste it and you go, wow, it's it's pretty damn decent, you know? And Absolutely. then you find out that, you know, there it's the sister wine, or you almost could call it, even though the the actual vineyards are pretty far apart, from what I understand. Um, it's, you know, you can almost call it the second wine of Chateau Saint Michel, but not really because it's not like the same vineyards, but no. you know, it's a sister company, you know? Absolutely. Now I paid over here, you're going to fall off your chair. Oh no. I paid $19 Australian here. This, this yep. bottle. Yep. And it's, 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 it's the same thing. This is Grand Estates. I mean, yeah, yours is 2008, you know, but it's the exact same. These, these are the exact, exact. same bottles. Exact. Wow. It's got Ray Einberger on the back. It's um, the government warning. You name it. It's got. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm guessing because of the export, having exported into the country, and then the I don't know how it's done. But yeah, I paid nearly twenty bucks. But hey, I'm I'm happy to pay that because it's something that I wouldn't get every day. Right. Well, you know, and it's uh, because the Chateau Saint Michels are going to be running twenty bucks or more. Uh, well, well, maybe not always, but close to twenty. That's usually about what they sh they run over here. It's around twenty something dollars. Um, so yeah, so I'm I'm excited to do this one. Oh, I, I automatically love this nose. I'm, I, I get almost the, the the beginnings of of what how it's going to be in about five years. So there's almost that tobacco, like a tobacco um, woodiness about it. Um, that's that's just straight off. But then this beautiful sweet fruit. Um, it's sweet without being sugary. Okay. It's light. It's got a hint of almost like chocolate going on as well, but it doesn't have the Penfolds had a savoriness about it, but this has right. just got a sweetness about it. And I agree. There's there's that sweetness, and and I'm really just swirling this a lot because this is a wine that um, the first three or four sniffs here, I was getting that smoke bomb. It's kind of that little bit of sulfur, so the sulfur needs to blow off, I guess. Yep. On this, but you get that smoke bomb thing, and it's kind of like, okay, and you know, back to the stinky. childhood and having the stink bombs. <laughs> <laughs> during, well, during our Independence Day thing, that's usually when we did them. Yep. But now I'm getting. It's like now, now I'm in a movie theater, and I get the buttered popcorn. You get a bit of butter, buttery, do you? That's yeah, funny. That's... I'm getting that kind of buttered popcorn thing now. Granted, I've got the younger, I've got I've got the year younger. Yep. But yeah, I get that. I get that melted butter, and that's I get really some of the fruit. Character, but... I I I would agree with you if I'd agree with you on that. It's, it's to me, I get more of um, almost a. For you, the butter popcorn is to me is what I'm getting like a, a tobacco thing going on. I reckon. Okay. Like a sweet tobacco, but it, it smells really, really nice. Yeah. We'll just say eight eighty-eight. God, it's cheap. 
you know, and, and now it's developing a little bit more. Maybe not, maybe the buttered popcorn isn't as prominent anymore. I can I can see where you're going with on on the tobacco. And then, and then there's also also a cured meat thing going on, like a salami, yes. um, uh, prosciutto type thing that I get. Uh, yeah, I was thinking the same thing with. With 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 the cured meats, not not the not necessarily a savoriness, not like you know the other one where you felt like there was like this dry rub on there with those spices, yeah. But more of that fatty type of, you know, like like salami is is a great really the salami and just kind of that that the fat kind of part of the salami. Yep, that's exactly right. That's exactly what so I a get. little bit of that sweetness, the little bit of sweetness of the from the fat. Yes. And the and now, yeah, now, now I want now I want some salami and cheese with this thing. Hold there one second. <laughs> All right, um, this is awesome. See? This is awesome. Let me tweet again here real quick while you're while you're. What are you, what are you getting over there? Being oh. Italian, we make our own homemade salami. Now, and this baby is the 2012 harvest of our salami, and I had some friends over the other night, and we just polished off half a stick. You can't eat too much of it because it's just it's too fatty. But God, it tastes good. Nice. Ah, Twitter said I tweeted that. Yeah, I did. There we go. I got got to make the tweet just a little bit different, or else it won't let me tweet. Um, wow. That yeah, is you know, we 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 Sorry, don't we, we don't make a we don't make salami in the Italian household here. But we've got awesome sauce. We actually had. Um, Dad and I had had some pasta with some meat sauce, and well, we had this uh, uh, the leftovers. Of, it was all leftovers, which means the sauce yeah. tastes even better. Um, yes. But the leftovers from this, uh, we had basically a chicken parm, and yeah. uh, we got some pasta, and, and just basically the red sauce is always homemade. I mean, we don't normally just get the the can of whatever store brand and just and just uh, doctor it up. We, Sometimes you do, but you know, it's usually you're getting you're getting the cans of tomatoes and you're making the sauce and simmer it, and then yeah. you freeze it, you freeze it, and you reheat it and freeze and reheat, and then after the third or fourth time, it's it's you know really concentrated and yeah, I mean, mom makes mom makes some good sauce, and she's not the Italian. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she's had, she's had to learn. She's she's been married into the, the Italian oh, family, yeah. so she's had to. Learn. Now, that has changed again in the last three or four minutes. It has. Now I. I feel like I'm getting kind of more like milk chocolate out of this, almost like. And again, I guess because I'm, I'm I'm back on the movie theater thing, milk dud type yep. of thing. That's my favorite uh, my favorite candy at, at the movie theater. But I'm getting that that kind of a chocolatey milk chocolate type of stuff. See, I'll, I'll go in the opposite direction, and it's probably because it's a year older. This one, I, I get more. The savory hint is coming through more. But having you said that about the chocolate. Yeah, I'm about to say the same thing. <laughs> you exactly. said savory, and I kind of thought that, but then I'm like, man, no, I get the chocolate more. But and now for me, like the milk chocolate's starting to fade away, and I'm getting still kind of that that cured meat type of thing. But maybe not as much savory as you're getting. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, we have three viewers. <laughs> hey, how you going? hello. How are you? <laughs> well, it's a big difference for me doing this now and not doing it at two in the afternoon when most people are at work in the states. So, of course. Of course, I don't know if it's counting me as a viewer. So maybe we only have two. Hey, it's. <laughs> hey, I'm happy. It means that someone out there is watching. <laughs> to be, if I get one viewer live, it's amazing. I mean, this 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 video will probably get. Um, within a week, the first two weeks of it being up will probably be around 300 views. And out yeah. of those 300 views, probably 200 will be on TiVo. So oh, most really? Oh, it, I do see you, you put that at... You're the only one on TiVo, aren't you? Um, actually, I'm, yeah, I'm the only current one on TiVo. And because if you go to web shows and food and beverage, and because it's labeled 1337, I'm the top hit... And that other guy, 
He's on the bottom. Matter of fact, I'm interviewing him in two weeks. I'm interviewing Gary. In t- oh. No, oh, yeah, there, there it is. I'm interviewing Gary Vaynerchuk in two weeks. I, I haven't announced it yet, but I just, I just blurted it out. So, uh, Gary's gonna be on the show. So uh, uh, that's gonna be, that's gonna be a lot of fun. How the heck did you school that? I emailed him. <laughs> I, I, well, I emailed him and his PR guy. Um, yeah. And I contacted Wine Library, and they're like. You know, here's Gary's other email, which he, he has like he has an autoresponder basically saying, Hey dude, I get so many emails now I can't really respond. But I, I interviewed his PR I mean I sent his PR guy and I said basically, you know what? I'm about the only person left that's doing anything close to what he did. Um yep. and uh I would like to interview him. So and and I've I've chatted with him a few times and he came down to San Marcos for a a book signing and I went up there and he was like, Dude, come on back to Austin, we're gonna go party. I'm like I can't. I gotta be at work at six in the morning tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to go up there, but I, I, I just, I had just started the job I was at at the time, and yeah. I was like, I can't, man. <laughs> you can't exactly. I spoke to him once, believe it or not. He was on a UStream. It was he just gone into Vayner Media, and he was doing doing a, a UStream thing, and um, you know how everyone does their put, put, puts their comment puts right. their comments in the box, and I've put. My phone number with um, my my cell phone with the extension here in Australia, and he's there. Doo, 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 doo. And he rang me. He literally <laughs> rang me live on Ustream, yeah. and I didn't know what to do. I just said, <laughs> yeah, he and, um, he has been known. Yeah, I mean, obviously he's done it, but I've heard of him doing that type of stuff. Uh, especially, I don't know if he does it as much now, but yeah, when he was starting the wine library thing, I used to watch WL TV all the time. I mean. No, so that, right. that's come on, come on. Let's put it. This, that's why do you think I kind of do this? It's it's that was part of the inspiration. Um, the other inspiration is Leo Laporte with Twit. You know, this week in tech. Um, yep. That that's why I go for all this. Um, you can't really see it, but go through all this stuff with the green screen and the lights and the, you know, just uh, and, and having Cam Twist as my studio. That's for, yeah. for those watching on Justin TV. That's how you can watch this. I yep. got this little. You know, little program here, which uh, you know, we'll we'll switch real quick over to Cam Twist. So now on the feed in Justin TV, this this little thing right here, this is a free program that um, enables me to pick whatever screen I want to do. I can do the entire. Let's see, I should be able to do. Oh, let's do full screen, and now you can see everything that's going on here. You've got. I've got the cam twist. I've got the little timer over here. I've got me and Sam over here. Um, I've got all this stuff going on the desktop. So uh, you know, I can I can totally do a bunch of stuff. And I, I don't even do like I don't even do uh, all the complicated stuff. You can put lower thirds and do all this. I I don't mess with. It. I tried to tried to mess with the green screen stuff, but it doesn't do a good job. So I decide yeah. I'll just post production that stuff later. But yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, wine still. The wine still. Yeah, good look, you know, and I admire you, Mark, because you've you've stuck at it since for years now, and you're still going, and you're going strong. And um, you know, you're up to how many episodes now? Two hundred and fifty. This is two fifty six. This will be two fifty six. This will be number two fifty six. We're just a totally geeky number because it's two to the yeah. know, fourth, fifth, eighth power, or whatever. So uh, for all those computer nerds out there. Um, so yeah, I mean it's uh, and honestly, Sam, I had to take a year off, and which which I don't really go through too much. But when the first episode I did when I came back from my year hiatus, I had to yep. explain that I had gotten into a little bit of trouble and I was not allowed to have any alcohol for a year. I, I mean, do remember I, re- uh, watching that. Yeah, you know, and that and and I had to, and I was it was embarrassing, and I, I didn't say anything to anybody. My family, my parents are the only people that knew for almost the entire year. And then when I yep. quit the job I was at, um, and I had and I had interviewed at other places, you know, I had to bring it up just because, especially if I was going to do any wine tasting, I had to go, hey man, I can't do anything until this date, you know. And um, you know, I kept going with the Psalm School stuff, and I kept just just staying on Twitter, just keeping the brand out there, you know, yep. the name recognition. And then, you know, as soon as, as soon as I was able to start doing the reviews, I hopped back on it. You know, it's it's. To me, that was the proof that I wasn't uh, like some of these other people that that do like 10, 10 shows and then they're like they, they finish, you know. Yeah. Now I'm not an out of work actor and or some news, some you know former news broadcaster that 
you know, doesn't have, you know, is looking to do this just for short term, just to have a portfolio. You know, I, I do yeah. it because I like it. And if it, yeah. if it brings better, if it goes into bigger and better things, that's cool. But that's not my goal. My goal is just to kind of just taste wine and, and it helps me stay focused with tasting different wines yeah, um, and doing that. So, and meeting people like you uh, and, and conversing with, with people all over the world. I mean, I, I tell people, it's like, I'm international. You know, I've had people go, oh, do advertising, get an, adver- an ad for, you know, uh, the local whatever in San Antonio. And I was like, well, you don't understand that the right. vast majority of the people that visit the website and watch the videos don't live in San Antonio. So getting an ad on the website or on the, or doing an ad on video is not going to do anything for me or for them. It'll do something for me, but it won't do yes. anything for them. They're not going to get any value out of it. No, exactly right. No, it's good. And I'm, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you because it's, 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 it's awesome to see. I mean, I'm at, I'm stuck at 149 episodes of wine, passion TV. And because of my, because of my winemaking, it's it's getting and my full time job, I'm finding it really hard to, to do episodes. So I'll still just chug along, might do one every two weeks, but um, it's kind of not my focus as much as what it used to be. Well, and and, and for you, I mean, you're 149. Outside of that, there, I, I I'm telling you, I look at this every few weeks. I look for other people out there that aren't like wine spectator. You know, they're not big money. Yeah. Like people like us that that aren't that aren't you know uh, that aren't like got the big you're, you're the one man band type of thing. 149 episodes. There's I don't think after that there's nobody that's I think even really close, um, or at least not current. I mean, in Australia there is there is. It's funny you should say that. In Australia there was a few guys that would go on what we over here a little saying called hammer and tong. So they were going like crazy punching out episodes. I haven't seen them. Right, they've just stopped. Like they've literally just stopped because I think they get the. It's like a fad. They 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 start and they get excited and they punch out twenty episodes and then, yeah, this is probably going. To, it's, it's not doing what I want it to do and they just fall off. You know, right. I think they perhaps might be the right the wrong mindset of thinking that they're going to be on television and they, you know one of the big TV networks is going to scoop them up and doesn't happen right yeah and and that's where we're, we're not doing it for that we're doing it because we're passionate that's why you have wine passion tv we're doing because we're passionate about the wine we want to share that passion not i'm not looking to i'm not look i'm not out there knocking on doors and sending out emails to be like hey you need to put me on your you need to put me on your your network granted i have had talks with people about like being on like a morning show or whatever yep. But it's not. But but they're looking at what are you selling? Yeah, exactly right. Me, <laughs> I don't have a <laughs> consulting business. I don't go out and do parties. You know, I I, I just want to sell the knowledge, not sell. I just want to do the knowledge. So, so even even those little morning shows, they they want when you're on there, it's really it's really just a you're putting out a five to ten minute ad is what you're really doing. It's Pretty not much. just. Uh, Hey, I'm just out of the kindness of my own heart. I'm going to talk about this product. No, I probably well, sell the product. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. You know. All right, so back to the wine. I still get um. I still get the, the fruit and I get kind of that chocolate aspect yep. to it. Um, it's still the, to me the brighter, not necessarily darker red fruits. Um, maybe even, maybe even like a blueberry thing. Maybe like a blue fruit thing for me, um, which I don't key into very often. It's one of those rare, one of those rare things for me to actually pick up on a wine. Um, it's kind of like one of those things where I can't decide whether it's red or dark. Then I kind of go, well, maybe it's, it's, like blue. Maybe it's blue, you know? <laughs> maybe it's blue, or maybe I'm just pulling it out of my ass just to say something. But you know, it, yeah, I, I get kind of that maybe more of a blueberry thing. And I mean, one of the things I do on on on, on the way into work sometimes is pick up the blueberry uh, pop tart. So I'm familiar with the processed flavor of blueberry. <laughs> it's funny. My my profile is exactly like yours. I get the red fruits, but I get more of a milk chocolate on mm-hmm. the palate. Than what I do get on the nose. Um, on the nose, I get very savoury salami thing going on, but it's very milky, chocolatey, and it's it doesn't have that minty, herbaceous 
uh, like bell pepper thing we'll talk no. about with the Australian one. It's completely different. Um, oh yeah, and that's probably and it's odd because usually cool climate Cabernet will always exhibit a minty character, whereas it's the opposite. The warm climate is showing the mint, and the cool climate is more showing more fruit for a Cabernet. And I don't think you would ever confuse this with California Cabernet. You know, oh, that's, no. and that's and why I was glad we're doing we were doing a Washington State one because you know e even in America and in, in Washington you know it's one of the big four, you know big three really for for the, for wine. You know California just eclipses everybody pretty much, but oh. you know you have some great quality cabs and merlots being made up in Washington State, oh. and oh, you know it, it, it's it's one of those things that we're highlighting something that's just not not the ordinary, you know. Look, I think California gets um, a lot of coverage, and it deserves to because it is it's, it's so so diverse. Uh, they do, you know, my favorite, my two of my favorite wines are California Pinot and California Chardonnay in the whole wide world. Um, Napa Valley, well, it's 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 not affordable to get the good stuff, um, but it's good to focus on something that's not as strong in the wine scene. Hence, why Washington State. I, I'd love to get some more, my hands on some more of their reds. I do have to say, I like the uh, Canuga Hill better mm. than the Columbia Crest. I just think it's, um, and maybe because I, I've got, even though um, these are both 2009s, this is still a, a, an older wine. Um, yeah. Maybe it's just because it's more developed, but I also know that I, I like, I tend to like Australian style. Um, I tend to like, not that I like it more than anything. I just tend to like the style. Um, yeah. Whereas with the Columbia Crest, I still think it's a, I think it's a very, very good wine. I think it's something that you should buy, especially in in the states, ten bucks. You can't go wrong with this wine. But there, I do get a little bit of thinness out of it. Um, yeah. A little bit of wateriness. So the finish doesn't it is a, it's a shorter finish. Um, cool. Up front, it's really nice. It really has all those flavors. Like I say, you get the blueberry and the milk chocolate, um, and I do get a bit of maybe this savory, but I get more like a spicy character to it. But yeah. then it, it kind of hits you in the front, and then yep. it just kind of disappears a little bit, you know. Oh, and look, I'll say this, and I've got no connections with Columbia Crest. I don't work for them. They haven't paid me to do this. But I actually, I actually do like the Columbia Crest um, over the Canunga Hill, just for the fact that I'm so used to the Australian style, and I yearn for something a little bit different. Yes. So, and that suits me down to the ground. That that style. Um, I do need food with it though. I couldn't just drink it on its own. I probably do need some like a nice piece of steak or right uh, something that's hearty to go with it. But I do enjoy that. No, I so think, there you go, Columbia Crest. I've just plugged your wine, <laughs> and, and and you know, and, and I'm not I'm not knocking it at all. I think I think oh, it's a great yeah. value. I think it's a good wine. I think you should buy it if you're out there, um, especially if you're looking for something. If you don't if you don't like the, this, this style, get this. It's going to give you just every. It's going to give you everything you want out of a cab to me. And that it's and, and yep. it's different than California, which you know to me different is good. Oh, I like different. It, it's okay. it's nice to it's nice to get. Uh, the unusual, like when I was down in Rockport, Texas, a couple yep. weeks ago, and I did that little episode with the wasps um, <laughs> outside. Uh, I went to the wine shop. The lady's like, we, we we don't like getting big box wines. You know, the big box store wines. They, yep. if I can buy, if they can buy it at the H E B or the Walmart up the road, then they won't carry it in their wine shop, just because they they want that unusual or they want the, they want the unique. And it was it was neat to go into their wine shop. It's cluttered as hell. No organization, but that was kind of half the fun. Was like you know getting down your hands and knees and looking for stuff. You know, yep. trying to find out where all these wines were, and, and, and you know I dig down and find this Texas wine that was pretty decent. Um, but you know I had to dig for that thing. You know.